On today's video, we're competing in Rockport, Texas in an IBCA barbecue competition. We're cooking ribs, we're cooking chicken, and we're cooking brisket, just like on the last video. Let's jump right in. It's time to start preparing. It's Friday night. So just like last time, I'm cooking two chicken halves and we're just gonna fully submerge the breast into our chicken brine. I told you guys last time, and I'll say it again, that to us, the chicken breast is the most important part. We wanna make sure that that brine gets deep in there and uh, everything is just gonna taste really good. So this is gonna be a 12 hour brine. It's around 6.45 p.m. and we'll take it out at 6.45 a.m. and then we'll start doing our injections and everything in the morning. So our next objective is to make our rib injection. I have some juice here or some liquids that we're also gonna pour in. And then I just wanna get everything nice and mixed up with a whisk. So I'm not sure if you guys can see this in the camera, but sometimes these injections, the powders, they kind of clump together a little bit. So what I like to do, let me see if I can lean it over here just a little bit. You can see that there's a piece right here that's clumped together. If I can get my hands on it, I just like to pinch it in my fingers and then it turns it a little bit more into a powder. And then I can get that mixture nice and not so many chunks in there. I definitely don't want that going into my injector. So it makes it a lot better when I do this. So we're just gonna keep mixing until we get a nice consistency. And then we're gonna move straight on in to injecting these ribs. So one of the things I kind of talked about when we were trimming these, and if you guys didn't see that video, I'll put a link for it, but I like to make sure that my ribs actually fit inside of this pan right here. It just makes it for easy cooking, especially whenever I put them inside this wrap. It just makes everything super duper simple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start pumping these ribs. So I'm gonna draw some injection, put on my needle, and then we're just gonna start hitting these ribs. Part. These are looking really good. Oh, almost got a facial there. This time I got the facial. Oh, and one of the things I actually wanted to show you guys on this little dial here. So on my needle, I have numbers one through five. So I found this out just recently. If you put it on one, the pumps are a little bit smaller, a little more compact. If you put it on five, it's a full pump. I like to put it on three just so I get about halfway and I can really control the liquid that's going into my ribs. Man, these are going everywhere. That's one tube on the ribs. We're gonna go back with our second one. One more. And just so I can move on to the next ones, I'm gonna flip this one over real quick. And I wanna show you guys exactly what we're talking about when we're getting these pumped up. You can see that definition now, right there in that rib. It's just plumping up. It's looking really nice. It's looking really good. This one right here doesn't look as great, but I can see that the meat's right there. So I'm gonna re-hit this one and you can already see that now it's starting to look really, really nice. It's defined. That's gonna be a good rib. So this is gonna be just over two tubes for one rack of ribs. And over here on the side, on these side ribs, I obviously want everything to look nice and plump, but I'm not too worried about it because if I'm being 100% honest, I'm not gonna pull from over here. I'm focusing right here on these four. I think those look really good. When you're cooking competition, barbecue, you really are focusing on certain parts of this meat. So you're kind of picking those out as you're going through. Woo! I have injection all over my face, but I did want to say we've been posting a lot of competition content. It's been getting some love and it's been getting some hate. A lot of people don't like the barbecue sauce on the brisket, on the ribs, on the chicken. If this video right here gets 500 likes, I will do a barbecue competition where I don't sauce anything. That way you guys can see how it turns out. I'm not sure that's gonna be the greatest idea because we are spending money, we are coming, and I'm gonna still continue to cook everything the same exact way. But if this video right here gets 500 likes, I will do a barbecue competition with absolutely no sauces at all. Okay, now that our ribs are injected, I'm just gonna go ahead and season these with our AP seasoning that base. This is the way I've been liking to do it. I just wanna put a base layer of seasoning on this. And then in the morning, we're gonna continue with the rest of our seasonings. The wind makes it hard. Also, I think there might be some really bad weather this weekend, so I'm really hoping not, but we'll see. Flip them over real quick. And this is the side that I really wanna make sure I get a nice layer of seasoning on. So I just want a nice layer of that base on here. A lot of people have really been liking this seasoning, guys. So I think if you're interested in trying it, now's a great time to do so. And that right there is all I need to do. So now I'm gonna put this into my Cambro. There's ice on the top and the bottom, and then we're just gonna let these chill until the morning. All right, time to work on that bad boy, that brisket. So now I've got my injection powder here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put my brisket injection. Oh, I always do that. For whatever reason, I always spill just a little bit over the edge. I don't know why. 
we're going to go ahead and mix this up. Mix it really well. I definitely don't want any clumps in here. And now it's time to start pumping this brisket full of this injection. If you guys remember, or maybe you didn't catch the last video, I believe I put seven tubes into my brisket. And the tube is just this whole tube right here. So we'll see what it takes today. Check it out. It's getting nice and plump already, which is something that I really love to see. I like to see the shape of that brisket just kind of come upward. That way I know that I'm gonna have a nice thick flat whenever I'm turning this bad boy in. Because we do turn in flat only slices, at least for the time being. So I've already done three full tubes. I'm working on my fourth and you can see that I'm already kind of towards the end of this brisket. Don't be alarmed. That does not mean we're done pumping this brisket with injection. Basically what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the brisket to just not be holding brisket injection anymore at all. And once I see that, I'll know that it can't take any more, but that's the fourth tube. That's five. That's six. This right here was seven full tubes of injection into my brisket. So I'm just gonna let that sit in the cooler for just a little bit before we season fully. If we absolutely needed to, we could kind of trim a little bit of this brisket right here, but I'm not worried about that. I can make those changes in the end because we do block our slices. So first we're gonna go over top with that base on our brisket. Ah, the wind is making it so hard to season right now. My next seasoning I'm gonna go over top with is our Southern Bell. This brings a little bit of black pepper. We do grind this just to make sure it comes out nice and kind of finer, but we're still gonna get that black pepper there. And the reason we want it finer is just so there's a nice even layer and it's just gonna make the brisket look really nice. There's not gonna be too much clumpiness. Last but not least, we're gonna go over top with our Southern Hospitality. This is our sweet barbecue seasoning. It truly brings a delicious flavor to our brisket. We've really been loving the flavor that comes out here. And so we're just gonna go right over top with that. And that right there is my seasoned brisket. We used that base, Southern Belt, and Southern Hospitality all over top. That's all the preparation that we need for Friday night. Our chicken is brining, our ribs are injected and seasoned with that base, and our brisket is injected and fully seasoned. We'll be back at 5 a.m. to start the smoker. We'll bring you guys along for the ride, and hopefully at the end of the day, we're getting some awards. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is 5.55. This is what our brisket looks like in the morning. Sabrina is not here yet, so I'm trying my best to do this on my own. It's really dark outside, so if you guys can't see me putting it in the pit, I do apologize, but walk it right on over to the smoker. Smoke is swirling right now. The wind is a little bit crazy right now, and unfortunately it has potential to be really bad weather. If you guys can hear the wind in the microphone right now, sorry about that, but brisket is on, so we're just gonna let it rock and roll. Next order of business is gonna be getting our ribs ready, and I'm filming alone this morning, so hopefully you guys can see everything. I really miss my wife right now. I wish she was here to help me, but I'm trying my best to get this video done for you guys. So. I'm going over top of the, that base with Southern Bell, trying to get that black pepper to pop through here. That's one of my favorite things about ribs. When you get that nice little black pepper pop, I think it just makes for a really great looking rib. All right, so I've got Bell. Now I've got a layer of that base and Bell. I'm gonna go over top with Southern Hospitality. This is gonna bring that nice red color that's beautiful on top of these ribs. But you can still see that black pepper popping through, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So overall, this is looking really good. Now for the top side, we're going to do the same exact thing. I will say that this is my more important side. I mean, they're both important. I want flavor on both of them, but I want to make sure that I see that black pepper on top here for sure. The same thing for Southern Hospitality. We're going to go ahead and get that beautiful red color all over top. So for those of you guys at home, it is right after 6 a.m. I'm just going to hit these ribs. Put them in my Cambro and they'll relax until we put them on around 7.30 or so. So I'm gonna go over with a little more bell just to try and get some more black pepper there. There we go. And that's all I need. 
looking really nice, nice and red. We're just going to let these sit for a little bit so it's time to put them on. Okay, timer just went off. It is 7 a.m., so it's time to take our chicken out of the brine and start injecting. We're not going to cook it yet, but I do like to take everything out right at 7 a.m., get that injection in there, and then just let this relax for a little bit. So I'm not sure if you guys can hear it in the microphone. It is raining. There's thunder. There's lightning, but we're still out here cooking. Gonna try and do as good as we can. Right now it's me and my dad. We're just hanging out. So I got my chickens out. I'm just gonna go ahead and cover them up. And then we're gonna start making our injection. So I'm not sure if you guys remember from last time, but my chicken injection actually comes from my brine here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna strain all of my chicken brine. There's a bunch of stuff that's in that brine, a lot of black pepper. Definitely don't wanna put that through your injector needle. It just makes it really hard for the injector needle to actually pump the liquid out and it'll get clogged a lot. I'm going to do two cups of my brine as injection and then we're going to add our injection powder as well. There we go. Perfect. Shake this bad boy up. Just going to draw one tube. Boom. And we're focusing on this breast. My goal is to not get into that pocket between the breast and the tenderloin. I told you guys last week, it gets really goopy down in there. That is a full tube and then a couple of pumps. So I'll pump a little bit more right here. I feel like most people are gonna get their cuts from right here whenever they're eating that breast. So I want it to be nice and flavorful. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the thigh. I'm sorry, I'm gonna hit the leg. Well, I am gonna hit the thigh, but I'll hit the leg first. Hit this maybe one time, two times. So now we're working on this breast. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll turn these around. And I'll kind of look at them and see which one I want to focus on. I know it's early in the day, but I like to start thinking about that as soon as I possibly can. So go ahead and look at it. They both look good, so we'll just see how the actual cook itself goes because both of these birds are looking really nice. They both look really uniform. I think they would box really well. For now, this is all that I need to do in a little bit. We'll get the rest of the wrap. We'll put some butter in there and all that good stuff ready, and we'll be ready to cook these chickens. All right, guys, ribs are about to go on, and unfortunately right now it is still raining, so I'm not gonna fully take you all the way up here, but I'll show you guys that it is right at, I think it is, hold on, yeah, it's 726. So we're gonna go ahead and put our racks of ribs on. I'm getting these ribs in here. They're looking good. I'm loving that black pepper. And they're looking nice and straight. We got the ribs on. They're looking really good. It's 9 a.m. and we're gonna check on our ribs and brisket. Brisket should be at the point where I wanna take it off and put it in a wrap. The rain has not stopped yet. It's just me and my dad here. The wife hasn't showed up. We're just bumming it out here, but we're having a good time. It's not that bad as long as we stay under the tent, but let's take a look at everything. All right, so there's our ribs. It's been about an hour and a half on these. And honestly, that color is impeccable. Nothing's coming off. There's my brisket. I'll spray that a little bit. We're actually gonna go ahead and take off the ribs and the brisket here at the same exact time because I want to retain that beautiful red color right there. I do not want to mess that up. So far, this is what our meats look like. All right, so I got my brisket here now. I have my brisket wrap in there, and I'm just going to go ahead and put foil over top of this pan. We're going to get the brisket right back in to the offset smoker to continue cooking, and we're just going to let this go until it's nice and tender. I don't put any probes or anything in there. I just want to continuously check mine. I'll probably check it after two hours to see where it's at and we'll just keep going. I haven't probed it at all. I don't really care what it's at right now. I just want to make sure it gets tender. So now I have my ribs. See the color on these? They look incredible. I pulled these a little bit earlier than I normally would. I normally let them go two hours on smoke, but the way these are looking and the way they feel, I was confident that I could take them off. So basically I was just looking for a little bit of color. Well, I'm sorry. I was looking for good color, right? Not a little bit of color. I was looking for good color and I feel like I have that already and I don't want to mess that up. So I don't want to keep them on smoke and have them get any darker. So right now I'm really happy with where they're at. We're just going to go ahead and clean these up a little bit. I like to take off all of this black stuff. 
coming out of the bones. And then we're just gonna go ahead and wrap them up. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put my ribs in this pan here. So, kind of like I showed you guys last week, I put the bones in towards each other. Then I get this smaller rack and I put it right here. So that's gonna be perfect for me. Right at 10 o'clock, it is time. Oh, I guess it's time to drop my phone first. And it's also time to season chicken. We're gonna season under the skin first with a little bit of that base. I'm gonna tuck this skin as best I can. The cool thing about these little mesh grates is they actually kind of like hold everything in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit under the wing and right over top. We're gonna go over top with our chicken seasoning. Try and be really careful here. That looks nice and seasoned, maybe a little more over here. These look pretty good. I'm happy with it. We're gonna wait around 30 minutes and then we're gonna put them on our drum. It's about three minutes before we're gonna put our chickens on. Sabrina finally got here, so the camera angles should get a little bit better. But I wanted you guys to take a look at what they look like before we put them on the drum. So you can see they're looking really nice. I can see that black pepper coming through, which again is just so important to me. I don't really know why I like that look, but I just think it looks really, really good, especially if you get a nice thinner glaze. It just pops through that glaze and I just love that look. So I think we really nailed it here and I think that this is hopefully gonna turn out good today. Time to put chicken on. We're gonna put it right in the middle. We have this covered with our foil pan. You can see the one's at 59 degrees and one's at 60. So as long as we can keep these within a couple of degrees of each other, we should be just fine with our cook. It's 1118 and I just pulled the brisket out. What I wanna do is I just wanna check on it for tenderness and just kinda see where we're at. I'm around 202, but it's not done. I know it's not done, I can tell because it's just not as tender as I want it to be. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cook this 30 minutes every time and then we're just gonna keep checking. To me, 30 minutes is not gonna necessarily overcook my brisket to where it gets mushy, but I do wanna keep checking it every 30 minutes until it's done. Another 15 minutes on our chicken. We wanna do a quick check here. Everything's looking really good, exactly what I want. This one actually has a really nice and even coating of seasoning, so I'm really, really, really liking that. Let it keep going. It's 11.51 and our ribs just came off. We have about 19 minutes until chicken turn in, so things are gonna start getting a little bit hairy. It's gonna start getting a little bit tight on time, but I do wanna show you the ribs real quick. This is with absolutely no glaze on it. We will glaze it in a little bit, but I love that color. It's that deep mahogany color and it just looks and smells delicious. We're gonna put these in the camera to rest for a while and we'll come back and glaze in a little bit. We have exactly 10 minutes. We really actually need to hurry up like bad. Okay, yeah, we need to hurry up bad, okay. I think we're just gonna need to get like a quick five minute glaze here and then we gotta go, huh? With nine minutes left till turn in, I'm waiting for the glaze to set on my chickens. I'm hoping that I can get a five minute set here real quick. They look amazing. They look really good. The color is right where I want it today. So I do feel confident, but I want that glaze to set just a little bit. Chicken is officially in and we were down to the wire on the timing. 
it just took a little bit longer to cook those birds today they were just a little bit bigger than we cooked last time so overall the cook went exactly what i thought it would thankfully no torn skin everything looked really good the glaze set really nice and it looked beautiful so i'm happy with the turn in let's see what the judges think next up is going to be ribs it's 12 45 and our brisket is fully done so we're going to rest it in the cambro up until we start the boxing process but if you just take a quick look at it you can see that we kept that nice color. I like that nice red color for the brisket. Everything is going to dry out just a little bit, but it's nice and super tender. If you can tell, yeah, it's going in like nothing, absolutely nothing, zero resistance. So this is going to be nice and tender. We'll box this up in a little bit. So it's right at one o'clock and we want to start slicing our ribs up. We want to make sure that we get the best ribs possible in this box. So I'm just going to go ahead and try and get some nice cuts on these ribs. I'm gonna hit the backside with some of my finishing powder, and then I'm gonna flip these over. I'm gonna take a good hard look at which ones I would turn in, if any, from this rack. I got another rack here. I have one more here. So what I'm gonna do now, get every single rib, dunk it, bam. Okay, it's 127 for a 130 turn in. We have up to 140. We have our ribs right here that we were letting glaze over. They're truly looking really nice. I love the color on that. So let's go ahead and pick our eight, box these up. A little more finishing powder. I, I just, I don't like the way that looks, honestly. This does look better to me for sure. Okay, ribs are officially in and I would say that overall I'm happy with the way they tasted but I wasn't very happy with the way that our box looked. We actually had four different ribs down on top first and it just wasn't working out for me so we swapped them out and I'm not really sure if that was the right play or not. But again, I just really couldn't get the box to look exactly the way I wanted. I think that everything tasted really good. I think the tenderness was there. We'll see what the judges thought, but now it's on the brisket. All right, guys, so we just pulled the brisket out and now it is time to glaze it. I know some people out there don't like that I sauced the brisket, but don't forget, if this video gets 500 likes, we will do a competition with absolutely zero barbecue sauces. Let's go ahead and throw this back on the smoker. We want this sauce to glaze. Right now it is 218. We'll probably give this 20 minutes or so before we take it off. brisket is ready to put in the box just about last thing we have to do is hit it with some dust and then box this thing up beautifully
Brisket's finally turned in, so it's time to break everything down and start getting ready to go to awards and then head home. If I had to give a grade on today's cooks, I would say B plus, A minus. I felt pretty good with everything besides that rib presentation. I know I need to just get over it, but it's really hard. In my head, I want them to look perfect in that box, and they just didn't today. We're gonna break everything down, and it's time to go home. That's the worst part about barbecue competitions, breaking everything down. Stay tuned for awards. We appreciate you guys watching. As always, really appreciate you guys tuning into this video. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next one. So third place is four, eight, six, zero, nine, seven. Third place, eight, oh, six, six, seven. Tenth place, ribs. Okay, here we go, third place. Eight, zero, seven, zero, eight. Fourth place brisket. Shout out, go, go smoke.